Good morning. Thank you. In this talk, I would like to share with you a new perspective on forests and water. I would like to invite you to see the world upside down and to imagine rivers in the sky. For this presentation, I will need a few accessories. The first one will be a pair of rubber boots. So why rubber boots? Because when we think of the influence of forests on water, we first think of water on the ground or below ground. We see raindrops falling over a forest and reaching the ground. We see this water on the ground starting to run off down the hill and quickly form streams and rivers. We see part of this water on the ground infiltrating into the soil, moving slowly below ground and being released very slowly into rivers and streams. So we know this very well after hundreds of years of observations and science. It actually started 2,000 years ago with the first description of the water cycle by Vitruvius, who described rainfall penetrating into the Earth's surface and creating springs and streams in the lowlands. As scientists today, we are still studying the effect of deforestation and forest restoration on water flows. For instance, we want to understand better how forests can maintain water flows during dry season or can reduce floods during extreme rainfall events. Based on this knowledge, policymakers and practitioners have developed watershed management plans to protect the water regulation functions of forests. So the rubber boot perspective is valid and important, but this is not the only one. The rain jacket perspective is important too. With this perspective, we want to understand better where the rainfall comes from and how forests can influence rainfall. Scientists have shown that forests play a very important role in regulating water flows in the atmosphere and rainfall patterns over land. Forests transpire large amounts of water much more than any other land use. So this water vapor is circulated around the world by wind and creates rainfall elsewhere. So with recent progress in modeling and rain rainfall observation by satellites, we scientists have been able to better understand those processes. For instance, a recent paper showed that in the tropics, air produces twice more rainfall if it has passed over forest for 10 days. Another recent paper showed that uh, at least 40% of rainfall over land originates from evapotranspiration over land, which we can call rainfall recycling. So plants use water, they transpire, they contribute to rainfall, which will be used by other plants. The same paper showed greater contribution in some part of the world, like in the Rio de la Plata river basin in Argentina and South Brazil. Around 70% of rainfall over there comes from evapotranspiration in the Amazon forest. 70%. So why does it matter? Because deforestation can have severe implications on water availability and rainfall in distant places in a way that we had not suspected before. 
So this change in perspective is fundamental. It's like seeing the world upside down. With the rainbow perspective, on the bottom part of this slide, we only see rivers on the ground, and we manage forests in the upstream, upstream watersheds to improve water regulation. With the rain jacket perspective, we also see rivers in the sky, and we start thinking of managing forests in distant places for improving rainfall and water availability. Before I move on to the last part of this talk, I actually need to remove this jacket because I'm very hot. So, when you're hot, you sweat. And sweat, sweating is good because it helps you cool down. So this is exa exactly what I said before about forests. They transpire a lot. So by doing this, they have a cooling effect at local and regional scales. In agricultural landscapes, it's very common to observe temperature differences of more than 10 degrees Celsius in the summer between forested land and open fields. It means that maintaining tree cover in those landscapes can buffer the extreme temperature that we expect with climate change and reduce the impact on food production. In cities, we know that cities are uh, affected by heat waves, with millions of people suffering from extreme temperatures. I hope we could invent a new machine for air conditioning in cities, a new machine with a new technology that does not consume energy, does not emit pollution, is bird-friendly, and is visually nice. But actually, we already have this machine. It's called a tree. By using sun energy, the sun energy, a tree can transpire more uh, several hundred liters of water per day and can, can cool down as much as several air conditioning units. So in this talk, I've shown that we should broaden our perspective on forests and water. We should better recognize how forests contribute to rainfall regulation and temperature cooling. In this recent paper with colleagues, we argue that climate policy should not only integrate forests as carbon storage, but all, they should also recognize the role of forests in local and regional climate regulation. Please Google the title of this paper if you want to know more about those cool insights for a hot world. Thank you very much.